Hey there, folks. It's the morning of day eight after getting sick with COVID. You know, yesterday completed an entire week of vaping with COVID. And here is what I've learned so far. COVID is not the common cold. COVID is not the flu. It is a very unique experience. Last episode, I told you about how much better I felt and how I only planned on doing one more episode to conclude this entire series, all because of how minor my symptoms have been, especially since I upped the nick in my vape. I haven't had a fever since day two or the morning of day three. My sinuses, which no longer hurt, are still draining and not fully clear. So this gives me the occasional cough as it drains down the back of my throat. <laughs> oh. Anyway, the only other symptom, the new symptom that I have, is dry chapped lips. I mean, I'm thirsty, but that's nothing different. The tinnitus, which has significantly got better since last episode, has not gone away. It remains. And the sound of silence, or the lack thereof, truly depicts the Omicron variant of COVID. Just yesterday, I got word that my son and his girlfriend tested positive for COVID, and their symptoms are worse than mine were. Neither of them smoke or vape. Is there some kind of correlation here to their symptom severity? I don't know. As a volunteer firefighter, he was double vaccinated and taking appropriate precautions to keep COVID at bay, including wearing N95 masks anytime he interacted with the public. But alas, here he is dealing with the exact same illness. You know, looking at the worldmeters.info coronavirus page, the holiday gatherings have taken their toll. And this variant has spread like wildfire. Theoretically speaking, this thing should be running out of fuel, both personally as well as on a societal level. Yet it persists and continues to just drag on, just like my wife's loss of taste. She's gotten part of it back, but only part of it. So here we are today at the beginning of week two, and I'm still waiting for this to be over. Is it going to be another day or two? Or is it going to persist longer than that? I don't know for sure, but this persistence is a growing annoyance. You know, my wife was at the doctor yesterday for something unrelated to COVID. And the doctor who saw her had COVID well over a month ago. And his cough and his loss of taste and smell continue lingering to this day. I was hoping to record this episode and tell you exactly how long COVID lasts or how long it takes before things are going to return to normal. But like everything about COVID so far, COVID just redefines normal because it just persists despite everyone's best efforts. Well, with this knowledge at hand, it's time to gird the loins and get back to work. I've let so many things get pushed to the side because of COVID fear, from house chores to making videos on this channel. They've all been limited by fear of something that you just can't change. Well, all that ends today. Frank Britz wrote, way to go, you are almost there. Soon, you will be back to your old self again. Thanks, Frick. I can't wait until this is fully passed, getting tired of the lingering issues and looking forward to reestablishing the new normal. Yeah, I said the new normal because everything indicates it's impossible to undo what's been done. And the old self simply isn't an option anymore. Ali Amini wrote, sorry to hear that. I hope you get better as soon as possible. When I got COVID, I lost my taste and smell. After one month, just back 50%. After three months, it's just 50%. And any e-juice has no taste for me. I am sorry about that. 
and I don't know what I can do for this problem. And vaping, no think good. I love vape, and when I lost my taste and smell, I so sorry. Can anyone here help me for this problem? I replied to Ali Amani and will tell you the exact same thing. People are saying to take zinc. Make sure you have enough zinc because zinc is an essential nutrient that helps your immune system and metabolism function. Zinc is also important to wound healing and your sense of taste and smell. However, if you take too much zinc, it can cause taste aberrations or give everything a metallic taste and can even suppress your immune system leaving you more susceptible to illnesses and infections. It can also lower your good cholesterols, cause copper deficiency, give you stomach pain, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. You know, my wife went to the doctor a couple years ago for flu-like symptoms, and the doctor prescribed her a zinc tablet. And every time she took that zinc tablet, she got nauseated and vomited it right back up. Each person is different. And what works for one person may not work for others. Ali Amani, I sincerely hope that this helps and explains why I suggested a multivitamin instead of just take zinc, go, go take zinc. You have to find the balance of nutrients that your body needs. Just like I need to find a way to improve the messaging on this channel. Richard Kidd wrote, I mean, I get the passion, my man, but damn, calm down. You can't yell change, LOL, and hey, get off the marijuana case, LOL. Been delivering here in Ontario for three plus years now, which I fully support, LOL. But I did quit after 35 plus two and a half packs a day for vaping 17 months back. Money, money, money. Keep on keeping on, though. At least you're keeping the subject alive. Richard Kidd isn't the first person who's told me to stop yelling. And the main reason the volume levels on my YouTube videos are rarely the same. They have evolved constantly is my understanding of what volume levels YouTube wants in these videos gets better. Believe me, if I could make all my videos sound like my first video, but better, I would. Audio engineering is truly an art form. And identifying target audience, well, that's essential for all communications. It's the fundamental principle of any communications class. Because if you don't target the message to your audience, they're going to tune out no matter how good the audio, the video, or the content is. And for the record, folks, I do realize I'm preaching to the choir. And I'll get to that in a minute. But since I'm on the record... Let me finish replying to Richard Kidd's comment. Despite what it may seem, I don't have a problem with cannabis use or legalization. In fact, I've had multiple cannabis companies reach out to me asking me to review their products and join the hemp family. You know, the marijuana re industry reached out to me long before any vaping company would even return my emails asking questions for inclusion in the news. Yet because this state has only approved medicinal marijuana, and it's not even an option that I can legally take, you need to have a prescription and a medical reason to use cannabis. Plus, if you go down that path, you forfeit your rights to other things. You know what? That's all besides the point. I support recreational legalization of all drugs because prohibition does not work, never has worked, never will. It only grows a black market and needlessly imprisons good, honest, hardworking people. Prohibition doesn't save lives, it ruins them and makes the problem worse because people can't walk into a shop and legally get what they're determined to get. So they turn to the black market where unscrupulous people taint or cut who knows what and sell it to some fool who has absolutely no choice but to buy a potentially adulterated product from the black market. 
You know, the whole Avali lie is based on vitamin E oil used to cut black market THC. It's impossible and useless to cut nicotine vaping liquid with vitamin E because nicotine vaping liquid is 100% water soluble. THC is oil soluble. Nicotine is water soluble. They do not mix. Oil and water never mix just like the black market never mixes with honest, legitimate wholesale suppliers and sources in best interest of public health. Well, you know what? You all know the content that I've been preaching because you are all part of the choir. But this past year has been more than that. It's been about my journey to establish and inspect the foundations of vaping. The science is clear about the benefits of harm reduction through vaping. The government's dependence on tobacco taxes is incontrovertible. Just like the profiteering practices of big corporations to eliminate their competition. So the question is, where do we go from here and how do I empower the empower the choir to go sing new accolades. For me, I'm going to keep bringing you the science advocacy news as it happens. Because you can't react to a problem unless you know that it exists. But I'm also going to shift in the high gear to create content designed to teach and help new vapors. We take for granted all the things that we needed to learn when we first got into vaping. And I need to focus on helping where I can do the most good. I'm not a politician or a lobbyist. And because I see the facts plain as day, it's way too easy for me to become overzealous, fighting for just the truth. I'm not here for a power trip. I'm here to make the most of harm reduction through vaping and love the music that we sing every day. So with that being said, it's time to gird up the loins and dive into some hard labor. So until next time, keep on vaping and have a great day, folks.